The South Carolina Hall of Fame was founded in Myrtle Beach in 1973 to recognize and honor contemporary and past citizens who have made outstanding contributions to South Carolina's heritage, history, and progress. During Reconstruction, Black South Carolinians helped draft the state constitution, held posts in the state legislature and federal Congress, and gained their education at the University of South Carolina alongside white students. But by the time Matthew James Perry Jr. was born in Columbia on August 3, 1921, South Carolina had entered a period of intense backlash against racial equality. Segregation had been reinstituted. Blacks were systematically disenfranchised. State politicians openly sought to perpetuate white supremacy. As he grew older, Perry began to question the culture of institutionalized racism he'd grown up in. The business of wondering about how society might justify the racial practices that I had become increasingly aware of uh, weighed with me. Uh, could I enter some field or study some field that might better equip me to understand what I was looking at, to understand the reasoning for it, and to perhaps, uh, along with others, try to find w some solutions to them. And I think that these were the considerations that prompted me to turn and to decide upon the study of law. Perry attended a newly founded law school at the all-black South Carolina State College. The Bare Bones New Program, which Thurgood Marshall famously referred to as a $1.50 law school, was established in accordance with Jim Crow laws in order to avoid integrating the law school at the University of South Carolina. Nonetheless, Many graduates of the South Carolina State Law School went on to become respected civil rights lawyers, and Perry would become the greatest among them. Upon graduating in 1951, Perry opened a law office in Spartanburg, becoming that county's first black lawyer. Of course, there was a lot to be done when I graduated from law school in 1951. I went headlong into it almost immediately. Because of his personality and his skills, he quickly gained a lot of attention because he was this uh, assertive black lawyer. His firm's reception room was often packed with homemade cakes and pies and baskets of fresh fruits and vegetables, gifts from clients who were unable to pay for his services. Always in demand, more work than he could possibly do, and yet he wasn't producing that much money because of his concern for justice he put his emphasis on really putting all of his legal expertise at the, at the disposal of his, of his client rather than, than trying to build up the coffers of his firm. As his notoriety steadily grew, Perry played a central role in nearly every noteworthy civil rights case in South Carolina. In the 50s and 60s, Perry helped earn acquittals for nearly 7,000 civil rights protesters. Many of the demonstrators arrested were very young, college and even high school students. His job is to be the, to be the legal architect. The students um, all across the state uh, really become the witnesses he needs um, to really dismantle Jim Crow policy and segregation. His work on behalf of the civil rights demonstrators in South Carolina created precedent after precedent, establishing the right of uh, all citizens to be able to protest uh, against their government. Perry's reputation as South Carolina's leading civil rights attorney led to his appointment in 1957 as chief counsel of the state NAACP. The NAACP, particularly in South Carolina, was a civil rights organization. Matthew Perry was his counsel, judge who becomes, of course, the, the beloved Judge Matthew Perry, that everyone uh, sings his praises today, but when I was a young boy, he was hated by many people. I mean, uh, he was one of the most hated men in South Carolina, but he was also one of the most successful civil rights attorneys, and he worked through the NACP. He brought South Carolina into the 20th century and beyond. Uh, 
There's not a facet of life that was not segregated in South Carolina before Matthew Perry entered the bar. And he basically tore down all the walls, all the barriers. Everything was desegregated because of Matthew Perry's work. In 1976, President Gerald Ford nominated Perry to the U.S. Court of Military Appeals, marking the first time an African-American from the Deep South had been nominated to the federal bench. It, it meant a great deal. It meant a step forward. And I had decided that, uh, uh, that I could do the job. Just three years later, President Jimmy Carter nominated Perry as the U.S. District Judge for the District of South Carolina. There was great excitement in the African-American community as well as the legal community because Perry was so well respected. He's number one. He's the most important civil rights lawyer in the history of the state, without question. <laughs>